Although SodaStream dates back to 1903, it was not until 1955 that it started manufacturing its flagship machine, known as the apparatus for aerating liquids. The machine essentially allows users to convert tap water into carbonated water by injecting carbon dioxide gas. Users can also add flavor concentrate and at some point they were offering over 100 flavors. The business model is quite simple. Consumers buy a starter kit that consists of the sparkling water maker, carbonation bottles and an exchangeable CO2 cylinder. The entire kit starts at $89 and can to up to $195 depending on the model. SodaStream's business model is based on a razor razor blade model. Its soda maker machines generate lower operating margins than the flavor concentrate consumable it produces. But it is the machine that has the ultimate purpose of encouraging repeat purchases of its consumables. Consumers in the United States typically pay between $5.99 and $9.99 and .99 for a 500 ml bottle of one of the flavors. Which would usually produce 12 liters of flavored sparkling water. And that attractive price economics was one of SodaStream's selling point. SodaStream found a way to enter the carbonated soft drink market without having to pile on billions of dollars in capital expenditures. Companies such as Coca-Cola and Pepsi had to spend a lot of time and money to set up their bottling and distribution systems. But SodaStream faced its share of troubles. The company's vision and mission were destabilized by the constant change in ownership, which eventually led to financial distress. Fortissimo Capital rescued SodaStream in 2007 and a new CEO, Daniel Birnbaum, was appointed. The mission of the company was revamped, while the tried and true profit business model was left unchanged. The strategies put in place were much welcome. Revenues grew from $136 million in 2009 to $563 million in 2013. But then, the carbonated soft drink market started to cool off. The decline can be attributed to changing consumer preferences due to health reasons. Growing concerns about obesity in the U.S. changed the way consumers looked at traditional carbonated soft drinks. The global trend has turned to being green and healthy and firms are adapting their production facilities to meet the changing tastes and preferences of consumers. And that totally aligned with SodaStream's goal of providing soda alternatives whilst creating a world free of bottles. Thus, they retooled their marketing campaigns around increasing consumer awareness of the environmental impact of making their own sodas at home. SodaStream was really capitalizing on that wave. I mean, it's true that using their machines would lead to reduced use of plastic bottles. But instead, it was the bottled water companies that benefited from the new trend. Premium bottled water brands such as Fiji were gaining momentum at that time, despite facing backlash over their green washing practices a few years back. But I can guess why this was the result. Customers might have been scared off with the initial investment they had to make in the starter kit. The thing is, most people don't think long term. Although they might save thousands of dollars over the years for spending less on bottled water or soda, the $89 they have to shell in the present overweight any rational thinking. But SodaStream was facing other issues as well. It was ramping up its U.S. presence but U.S. retailers were unaware of how the gas cylinder exchange program works and had trouble filling up the already used cylinders. Also, a lot of flavors were often not available at retailers, which dampened customers' interest in buying the machines. Furthermore, the American consumers were not accustomed to spending time making their own carbonated beverages. This might seem like a small detail but cultural differences like that can make or break companies. Coca-Cola and PepsiCo also jumped on the green and healthy bandwagon. Coca-Cola had already introduced its low-calorie drink, fruit water, which was discontinued only two years later. This time it agreed to a deal with the Keurig Green Mountain, where it agreed to license its brand, allowing customers to make Coke at home using Keurig devices. SodaStream tried to fend off Coke and Pepsi with its controversial ad that was designed to air during the Super Bowl in 2013. The ad featured Coca-Cola and Pepsi deliverymen who were faced with exploding bottles of their company soda. However, the ad was rejected by CBS for its references to Coke and Pepsi. But 2013 was not all bad. SodaStream still had the support of Scarlett Johansson. The actress resigned as humanitarian ambassador for Oxfam after criticism over her endorsement of SodaStream. SodaStream's main plant is in an Israeli settlement in the West Bank. 
Israeli settlements are generally seen as illegal under international law, and products that are made there are heavily boycotted by activists. SodaStream tried their luck with another ad in the 2014 Super Bowl. This time, the ad was definitely entertaining but failed miserably in attracting new customers. By 2015, sales had fallen to $413 million and their stock price tanked. It is actually interesting that the bottled water business was booming. The industry was expected to reach $350 billion by 2021. Within that industry, sparkling water was growing at even a stronger pace. This is when SodaStream decided to pivot from selling soda-making machines to focusing on sparkling water. They launched a line of flavored waters, some with no calories and others with added fibers and vitamins. SodaStream essentially rebranded into a water company and ended its fizzy battle with soda companies. And the business was growing again with sales reaching $543 million by 2017. Pepsi ended up buying SodaStream for $3.2 billion in 2018. I have actually tasted cola-flavored drinks using the SodaStream machine. To be honest, I was unimpressed with the taste. I have never taken another sip of their flavors since then. But I know some people that really enjoy them. Do you personally use the SodaStream machine? Are the flavors even worth it at this point? As always, let us know what you think.